Trapped Chilean miner Florencio Avalos is seen via computer screen on Monday. Trapped Chile miners face four-month mental physical tests. Entombed until Christmas, miners to struggle to maintain health and sanity. The good news. Weeks after a cave-in, 33 miners in Chile have been found alive in a deep shelter. The bad news, they're trapped there, possibly till Christmas. Another cave-in is possible, though unlikely. Poor sanitation may be a health hazard, and the food reaching them is likely to leave them malnourished, experts say. The miners' fate, however, likely hinges not on physical conditions, but on their mental health and their ability to keep each other hopeful, psychologists say. If the miners who are trapped can bond and work together to tick off the days they are separated from their families and friends, it would help them survive the ordeal, said John Cacioppo, a psychologist who specializes in social isolation in humans and animals at the University of Chicago. Chile miners survived on tuna and milk. The ordeal began on August 5th. The roof of the San Jose gold and copper mine in Chile collapsed trapping the miners underground in a shelter that, according to some news reports, is only about 540 square feet, or about the size of a small apartment. For 17 days, the men survived in the sweltering compartment by each consuming two mouthfuls of tuna and a half a glass of milk from an emergency cachet every 48 hours, according to the Reuters news agency. But on Sunday, engineers reported that a six-inch wide borehole had reached the miner's shelter, nearly a half mile underground. On Tuesday, a second thin borehole was completed with one more to come to ensure the miners won't be cut off again. Notes and letters from the miners that have been hauled to the surface report that they are alive and fine in the shelter. Miners to be malnourished. Water and food in the form of nutritional glucose gel packs have been lowered to the miners through the opening. And this should be enough to allow them to survive for several weeks, said Wayne Askew, a nutritionist at the University of Utah. For a three to four week time period, if they can get water and a glucose electrolyte solution down to these people, they're going to come out malnourished, but they're going to survive, Askew says. If a vitamin and mineral mixture and a liquid protein solution can be added to the miners' diets, that should be enough to prolong their survival until their rescue. By the time the miners are hauled out, this limited diet will likely have left them thinner, with weaker bones and atrophied intestines, Askew said. After rescue, solid food will take some time getting used to. They're not going to be in very good shape, and they're not going to be very happy, but it should work, Askew said. In addition to the cramped quarters and liquid diet, the Chile miners are cut off from sunlight and are using the batteries of a truck in the mine to power lights and charge their helmet lamps, according to Reuters. The Chief of Mine Emergency Operations for the U.S. Mine Safety and Health Administration. Feces threat for Chile miners. As the bore shaft is enlarged, rescue workers should be able to lower more substantial food down to the miners, Eurosec says. With more food, though, sanitation could be a problem. Mine safety shelters in the U.S. typically have rudimentary waste disposal systems, but these can quickly become overwhelmed, said Eurosec who wasn't sure whether any plumbing is available in the San Jose mine shelter. With the Chilean miners likely trapped for months, alternative waste disposal methods will have to be developed to prevent sickness, Eurosic said. The main danger is that fecal-borne pathogens such as E. coli may be re-ingested and infect the upper gastrointestinal tract, he said. This can lead to diarrhea and even death. Feces, Eurosic says, may have to be hauled to the surface, or rescue workers might lower bags or containers to isolate the waste within the shelter. Another option could be to keep the miners on a mostly liquid and low-fiber diet to prevent the buildup of solid waste. If they're in an area with no provisions for waste disposal, it would be desirable to not be producing much, he said. Somebody needs to give some thought to that. More cave-ins unlikely. Another cave-in is among the least likely threat to afflict the miners, though it's always possible, MHSA is Eurosic said. Engineers appear to be taking precautions to minimize any further risk to the miners. For example, the boring of a person-sized hole with diamond tip drills is proceeding at a deliberately slow pace to avoid further destabilizing the rock layers, Eurosic says. They have a lot of things to do, so I can see why it's taking long, he said. 
psychological ordeal for minors. The long wait for rescue won't be easy for the minors, and it will be vital that they find ways to occupy their time and help each other remain optimistic, the University of Chicago's Cacioppo said. If they're a cohesive group and there's reason to think they can get out alive, they're likely to be fine, Cacioppo says. If they were not cohesive to start with, it would be worth trying to do something to build group cohesion. Rescue workers should try to give the minors simple tasks such as writing letters to their families, anything to help pass the time and stay connected to loved ones, he added. Give them a clock and calendar so they can standardize their lives. It's like a 120-day sentence, and it's not solitary confinement so they can do it together. Antipathy is virtuant. Virtuant. If social order breaks down among the minors, or if one of them begins feeling ostracized, trouble could ensue. If one of them starts feeling isolated, it can spread like wildfire, and it can be devastating to their morale, Cacioppo said. Studies have shown that perceived social isolation can lead to depression as well as increased hostility. It can also interfere with sleep and increase stress hormones. Physical health, he added, can have a concrete effect on mental health. If they start to get sick and die, a lot can change because the all-for-one and one-for-all mentality works as long as everybody's surviving. When they start to perish, you have new stressors being introduced. How well the miners get along through their ordeal will also affect whether the experience leaves behind psychological scars. There should be few, if any, long-term consequences. They can do it. MSHA's Eurosic said the Chilean incident can end up being the longest case of trapped miners that he knows of, but he's hopeful that there will be a happy ending. Miners are a tough breed. I really believe that they can do it, he said. Now that the rescue workers have found them, they're going to do everything in their power to get them out.